There's a lot of guys on the YouTubes that are calling this one of the best entry-level mountain bikes out there. And for a price of $1,999, I can see why. Because most electric mountain bikes are starting out around three to $4,000. Five years ago, when I bought this, this is the Specialized Levo SL. I dropped over $6,000, which at the time was one of Specialized most affordable electric mountain bikes. So I thought it'd be interesting to compare the differences between a higher-end mountain bike, like the Specialized Levo SL, versus an entry-level bike, like the Velotric S1. After that, I'm gonna take the S1 up to a single track trail just a few miles up the road and see if it truly is one of the best entry-level mountain bikes out there. I'm also gonna show you something that these guys have done that no one else is doing, which makes this one of the best versatile bikes I've seen. All right, so there's a lot of differences between a $6,000 and a $2,000 mountain bike. So I just wanna talk about the top five. And the first one is the weight. Generally, the lighter the mountain bike, the more expensive it is. The Specialized only weighs 34 pounds. Pretty light bike. Velotric is about double that at 64 pounds. So quite a lot heavier. The next biggest thing is the suspension. You've got some of the nicest suspension for a mountain bike. And then you got some super cushy rear suspension with the Velotric. This is a hardtail. However, in the front, this is hydraulic, not air. The components are the third thing. On the Specialized, you got higher end gearing. This is an SRAM derailleur, which is matched with an SRAM shifter. On the Velotric, you got a standard derailleur. I see a lot of these on bikes in the $1,500 price range, but you do have a mid-range shifter. And then on the Specialized, as far as brakes, you have SRAM brakes. And with Velotric, you just have Shimano. Number four is the tires. These are a butchered trail. This is a five-year-old tire and just still looks almost brand new. On the Velotric, just have your standard Kenda tires. And the tread is not as good, not as beefy. Number five is the motor. In the Specialized, you have a Bosch mid-drive motor. On the Electric, there's a hub drive. So having all that high-end gear is awesome. I mean, who wouldn't want the best that money can buy on a mountain bike? But we're talking about an entry-level mountain bike. You really don't need something that high-end to hit trails that you're gonna feel comfortable with if you're new to mountain biking, which are green rated trails. There's very few rocks, you got hard pack, and pretty much zero drops. So for trails like that, I think the S1 is a better option. And so I'm gonna take this up to the trails, test it out, let you guys know what I think about it, and then show you some other cool stuff that Velotrix has done. Well, thank you Specialized for your time. I appreciate it. When I wanna hit some blue and black rated trails, I'll come get you. Oh yeah. Woo. Before I really get going on these trails, I wanna show you a couple things that makes this bike unique, and that is the riding modes. So first off, you have plus and minus. This is your pedal assist. Zero, one, two, three, four, five pedal assist levels. The higher the level, the faster you go. But there's this orange button, and this is your riding mode button. So if you notice, it says trail. If I hit that, it goes to boost and then to eco. And the only thing that changes between those modes is the power delivery. So on eco mode, you can still reach the same top speed on pedal assist level five, but it changes how much power is given as you begin to pedal or use the throttle. On eco mode, you want the power to come on nice and gentle, and so they've tamed down the power delivery. Where on trail mode, that's gonna be more technical. As soon as you put pressure on the pedals, you want that power to kick in. And then you have boost mode, which is basically just giving you the power as fast as the bike can possibly give it to you. This bike, instead of having five different riding experiences, pedal assist one, two, three, four, and five, this one has 15. You have three riding modes, you have five pedal assist modes per riding mode, three times five is 15. I can do some math sometimes. Mathematical! So I got it set to trail mode on pedal assist level five. Let me show you how it handles. So first off, I'm not a huge mountain biker. I would consider myself a intermediate to below intermediate rider. So with that being said, I'm just gonna tell you about my experience. And I wanna start off by talking about the power delivery. So again, I'm on pedal assist level five on trail mode, and you do have to work to make it up the hills. I'm climbing and now it's not super steep, but as you can see, as I continue to ride, I'm getting out of breath. The nice thing, it does have this throttle. When you hit that, there is a substantial boost in power. So if you want to cheat or if you're too tired to make it up a hill, you got that option. Thought I'd take a break here because as you can see, I'm kind of sweating and out of breath. But I want to talk about a few things that I really like about this. And the first one is the handlebars. That is as mountain bike style as you can get. That's as wide as the specialized level that I have. I also like the grips. They're small, they feel nice. Very similar to the ones on my higher end bike as well. I like the gearing. I mentioned that before, but just rapid fire, it locks in quick and fast. And the brakes are fantastic. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to engage. The saddle's not that bad. It has this groove in the middle. It looks nice, pretty comfortable. Again, as you put the miles on, it gets a little raw. That's just part of mountain biking. And then the tires, they're not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. I'm starting to hit more of this rocky stuff and then some sharper bends and the tires are gripping pretty good. I'm coming down the mountain and I got more speed and with speed, that's where you get an idea of how good the suspension is. My report is, it's actually pretty good. This is a blue rated trail and coming down and suspension's kicking butt. I am getting a little bit of rattling in the battery, especially on the rocky parts, but it's not bad. Another thing I like is the handling. It handles and rides like a mountain bike should. You can see why the other YouTubers were calling this one of the best entry level mountain bikes out there. It's pretty awesome. I had to stop again because there's a fun little drop right here and I got a little bit of air and I'm going to attempt to do it again. And the crowd goes wild. 
That was the most epic air ever. Intermediate mountain biker here. I made it back down. Let me give you a battery update because I had a full charge when I took off and it is 75%. So not bad. Blotrick has a range rating of 70 miles on this. Obviously that's going to depend on where you ride it, how you ride it. I think you could get 70 miles if you rode it in the city on flat terrain. However, for stuff like this, probably about half that. If you want to check out other mountain bikes that I've done, I've done a higher end one from Bulls Bikes that'll have somewhere on the screen. So go check that out. As always, thanks for watching and take care.